My heart, get ready. Fantasy football is here. Welcome to the Scout Fantasy Show. ScoutFantasy.com is home to the Fantasy Football World Championships and the best players in the world. Real money winners giving their secrets to help you win. Now exclusively on iHeart. This is the Scout Fantasy Show with your host, the one, the only, Dr. Roto. Hey there, everybody. It's Dr. Roto. Get out the insurance cards. Get out the copay. The office is open, my friends. Now, Everybody does a round one mock. You know what I'm going to do today? A round two mock draft. That's right, a round two mock draft to see what I did with round one and put it together in round two. Will I do round three? I just don't know yet. Depends what I want to write about. But I think right here, I want to see, because I think round one is pretty, pretty solid through the first 10 picks. You got Bell, not in any order. Bell, Gurley, Elliott, uh, David Johnson, Hunt, Kamara, Barkley. And then you've got your res- receivers, uh, Beckham and, and Hopkins. And then I think picks 11 and 12 are up for debate, whether that's Fournette or Gordon or Julio Jones. But I think round two becomes a little bit dicey. I really do. I think the better picks in round two are in the back are in the first half of round two, not in the second half of round two. So normally, you know, you'd want to have, let's say, Bell or Gurley at pick one, but I don't know if I love what I'm getting in round two. So I may I may be okay drafting seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve this year. I think I'm okay with that. Uh, look, I'll figure it out wherever I draft. I don't worry about that, and I always assume that people will make mistakes because they do during drafts. So the point is that I just will try not to make any mistakes on my own, and I'll try to figure out who the guys that I like are. So let, without further ado, let's go through round two of a draft. So the team who I picked 12 in my first mock, I said took Melvin Gordon. So at this point here, I came back with Julio Jones Roto. I did it for one big reason. I think when you look at Julio Jones Roto, There are certain weeks that he just wins you by himself. Now, he didn't have that many of those weeks last year. He only had about, I would say, three weeks where he really was off the charts. The one against Tampa Bay for sure, where I certainly owned him in DFS. Thank you, Julio, that week. Uh, But I know he has three to five weeks of impact play in him. He wasn't great last year, but the Falcons weren't great last year. I think Ridley helps him. I think that Ridley and Freeman, if he can stay healthy, which is a big if, I think Freeman needs to stay healthy. I think losing Taylor Gabriel was a problem. I think Ridley's going to help. I think they have to use Hooper. I'll take my shot on Julio Jones Rono there. I don't feel amazing about this pick, but I feel good about this pick. I certainly think he needs to be going in the first few picks of the second round. That's for sure. I don't think I'm taking him in round one, but I certainly will take him in round two. The pick after that that I have, and this is going to the guy who took Leonard Fournette, is Keenan Allen Roto. All right? Now, think of it this way. I know Keenan Allen Roto is always injured. I get that. But, but, right? 2015, he only played eight games. 2016, he only played one. But when this guy's healthy, is there anybody better? I could argue that I like him as much as Julio Jones Roto because Keenan Allen's another Roto child. Look at that. Last year, 9 for 100, 5 for 138, 12 for 159 and two touchdowns, 11 for 172 and a touchdown, 10 for 105 and a touchdown. He has big, big games. I like taking him here. Those are two impact receivers. So what happens is, at the end of the first round, I don't really like Leonard Fournette and Melvin Gordon. I mean, I like them, but I don't love them. But if I compare them, Fournette, uh, Julio, Gordon, Keenan, whatever it is, I'll be okay. Now, I think a good question is, would you take Keenan, Allen, Roto, and Melvin Gordon on the same team? Sure. Look, I like the Chargers. I think they score. I think they're a good offense. I I don't love the move, but I'm okay with the move. I am. And then I probably go get Phillip Rivers, and when the Chargers win, especially in the best ball, I know that I'm going to have a very good week. Okay, so I take the two receivers there. And now I take the guy I probably really want to take as well. Uh, I like the Dalvin Cook move. I do. I like the Dalvin Cook move a lot. This guy is a very, very special player. 
Now, the team that took Cook here in my mock had old Odell Beckham Jr. Roto. This is very risky. This is one of those things where you watch, you know, the guy and they say, don't do this at home. And I'd say this, don't do this at home. And I probably, if I had one team, I wouldn't do this with one team. But if I had multiple teams, I would take Cook and Beckham on one team. Because that team is a high-flying, high-profiling, styling, Ric Flair type of team, baby. Because when that team hits, they are going to hit big, big. Lat Murray's a bum. All right? B-U-M, bum. Thielen and Diggs are good. Kyle Rudolph is good. But Dalvin Cook, man, that guy is great. And so long as he comes back healthy with Kirk Cousins there, I love what's going on. So I will absolutely take the shot with Dalvin Cook. And if you wanted to take him earlier, I have no problem with that. Because you're not getting him later. So if you don't take him here, you ain't getting him at the, you're not getting him in round three. So you're going to have to pull the trigger. Okay. The next pick here is the team who had DeAndre Hopkins. I could easily go Michael Thomas here. I could go A.J. Green. I could go Devontae Adams. I get all those picks here, and I would be fine with that. I'm going to take Jarek McKinnon. Now, I know ADP-wise, this is a little soon for McKinnon. Let me share something with you about ADP. How do I use it? I look at it. I see it. And it helps me know what people are doing. But that doesn't mean that I do it. I need to do what I want to do. So if Jarrett McKinnon's ADP is 20, and I think he should be 16, I'm going to take him at 16. I don't need to be uh, handcuffed to ADP. Do what you think is best. It's your team. And I think more often than not, we lose fantasy leagues because we're so worried about, oh, did I take him too early? Oh, my God. Take the guy you want. Take the guy you like. Now, don't be stupid early. There's early and there's stupid early, right? If you're taking the guy four rounds early, easy peasy. See, I think ADP, if if McKinnon's ADP is, 20, is 32 and I take him at 16, then I'm crazy. If it's 20 and I take him at 16, it's my preference. And it's my preference. I think he's going to see the ball. I like, I like Matt Bryder, but not that much. I think Jimmy Garoppolo is going to go to him a lot. So I'm going to go to him. All right. Then comes the team who took Saquon Barkley. And there's a bunch of receivers. Michael Thomas, A.J. Green, Devontae Adams, Doug Baldwin, Tyreek Hill, T.Y. Hilton. How do you differentiate between which receiver to take? I do it in three ways. High octane offense, quarterback, and playoff matchups. So in this case... I'm going to take Michael Thomas. Why? Plays for the Saints. Good offense. And Drew Brees is his quarterback. So I know at the end of the day, I get Michael Thomas because I don't want to worry about Jameis Winston stealing crab legs and groping somebody buddy on Uber. I don't want to worry about Andy Dalton sucking, which he can do on a week-in, week-out basis. So at the end of the day, am I taking Breeze? Am I taking Thomas? Yeah, because I'm taking Breeze over famous Jameis and Andy Dalton. Done. Easy peasy. I'll make that move a hundred times. Now, I probably with that same idea should take Devontae Adams, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take A.J. Green next because I just think A.J. Green is a superior player. I like A.J. Green and I think this is a guy in years past, people are taking A.J. Green to pick number five or six in Vegas. So he fell off the face of the earth last year for a few reasons. One, The Cincinnati Bengals offensive line was atrocious. Two, they had no running game. Three, they had no receivers beside him. And four, they had an injured tight end. So when everybody in the stadium knows the ball is going to A.J. Green, this guy's getting quadruple covered. As well he should. I mean, look at these numbers for A.J. Green. 5, 5, 10, 5, 7, 3, 3, 1, 5, 4, 5, 7, 5, 2, 6, 2. That's how many catches he had. That's unforgivable. This guy needs to get fed the football. He's your best player. Give him the football. Now I'm hoping that Joe Mixon will get will be better this year. I'm hoping John Ross will be a downfield threat. I'm hoping that Tyler Boyd will step up. I'm hoping Tyler Eifert will stay healthy. If all those things happen, then A.J. Green is going to be a good pick there. 
Okay. The team that picked six took Antonio Brown. And coming back, I'm having this team take Christian McCaffrey Roto. Now look, I don't like C.J. Anderson as far as I can throw him. The guy stinks. And I'm not big a Torrey Smith fan either. I think Christian McCaffrey is real deal. So let me just get this out here right now. Okay? I think North Turner will find the way to get McCaffrey the football. I think that Mike Shula was a disgusting offense coordinator, one of the worst in the NFL, and he never got this guy in enough space. You got to give him the football. This guy is a threat, and I think North Turner will figure out how to use him. North Turner's been around this game. He knows what to do. He will figure out how to get Christian McCaffrey, Roto, the ball. So in a PPR, if this is a standard league, I'm not taking him here. If this is a half point PPR, no thank you. If this is a PPR league, I'm in on Christian McCaffrey. I like it. All right, so now we're to the top five teams here. So Alvin Kamara went to pick five, and I'm going to have this team take Devontae Adams on the way back. And I think this team will be really happy they did that. So there's no Jordy Nelson. Randall Cobb always seems to be injured. Geronimo, Allison, whatever. I got to think Devontae Adams gets 100 catches this year. Easy peasy. And I think this is a great pick. So I think I'm still at a comfort level here with Adams with this pick. And I'm good. My next pick for the team who picked four is Dougie Baldwin. I mean, Seattle's some sort of train wreck right now. Have you looked at their depth chart? Their starting tight end is Ed Dixon. Their wide receivers are Brandon Marshall, Jerron Brown, Tyler Lockett, and Doug Baldwin. I mean, they're going to have to feed Doug Baldwin the football early and often. So if I at this point right here, I'm comfortable with that pick. And if I have David Johnson, I come back with Baldwin, I'm really liking my start. I'm really liking my start. So it's now these three picks at the end of the second round that it starts to get dicey. Okay, these are the three guys. I like them. I don't love them. I'm good with everybody else in that round. But as you start to get here, I start to get queasy. That's right, a little queasy. Firstly, Devonta Freeman. Now, I love Devonta Freeman, but I do worry that he can stay healthy. I do worry that there's Tevin Coleman. I do worry that they have to feed Julio Jones, Roto, and Calvin Ridley. I just, I, I'm not going to be the guy who drafts Freeman. I listed him here as the, you know, the tenth pick of round two because I think that's where he's going to go. I just don't think I'm going to be the guy who pulls the trigger. In fact, I know I won't be. If he's there in round three, maybe. I just don't feel good about it. So what I want you to understand is this. When you make picks, you should like your pick. Don't take a guy you don't like. If you don't like him, there's a reason. Don't take him. Don't be like, well, I should take him. Uh, The ADP says it. Who gives a crap? Who gives a crap what the ADP says? Take a guy because you like him. Boom. All right, now, at pick 11 of round two, I'm going to do something interesting here. I know that there's one guy picking around the turn. And what I know is this. There's Joe Mixon, LaShawn McCoy, Derrick Henry, and Jordan Howard. Four running backs. I can do it in one of two ways. I can take a running back here that I like and then get the guy I like at the end. Or... I could take my favorite receiver here, assume that guy's going to take two running backs if he does, and I know I get the running back I want no matter what. So here, I may take Tyreek Hill. Because I like Hill, and I think he's underrated, and I think that people worry about, oh, Pat Mahomes. I'm not worried about Pat Mahomes. Much better than Alex Smith. Oh, Sammy Watkins. Sammy Watkins is a very good second receiver. He's not a star. Tyreek Hill is a star. So I think I take Tyreek Hill and then say to the guy at pick one, dude, you take any two guys you want. I'll take whoever you leave me. I don't care. You want McCoy and Howard? I'll take Mixon. You want Mixon and Howard? I'll take McCoy. You want Henry and Howard? I'll take Mixon. Whatever it is. So I would say in the last pick of round two, I would take Joe Mixon just because I think LaShawn McCoy is getting old. Derrick Henry has to worry about Deion Lewis. Jordan Howard has to worry about a new coaching staff and a lot lot better talent this year. So I think I'm going to take Joe Mixon. But these two picks right here at the end of round two are my least favorite picks of the round. They are. 
I don't trust them. I like them. I don't love them. Simple as that. But you know what I do love? I love ScoutFantasySports.com. And I'd love if you become a member there. So go to ScoutFantasySports.com. Not Scout Fantasy. Don't go to Scout Fantasy. Those guys are pretenders. I'm at ScoutFantasySports.com. That's where you find me. That's where you find Ronas. That's where you find Sean Childs. And once you do your football studying, I want you to go to play FFWC.com. Sign up for one of our drafts. Be part of what we're doing. Best payouts. Best competition. Best scoring system. I know you're going to have a great time. All right, this is Dr. Roto saying it's time to put away the insurance cards, put away the copay. The office is closed, my friends. Back with so much more tomorrow. This is Dr. Roto saying be well and take care. Thanks for listening to the Scout Fantasy Show. There's never been a better time to join the Scout Army. Visit ScoutFantasy.com. Use the promo ROTO for two months free. And don't forget, fantasy players, please thumbs up the podcast on the iHeart app. See you next time. Go Scouts!